Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm giving you part 7 of this interior design, or interior scene, that I'm making in Blender. Um, uh, so yeah, in this part we're going to be, I suppose, adding the materials for these beams up here, and uh, the thing that TV is standing on. And then after that, we should be moving into the compositor, really. Okay, so let's start off with uh, the thing that TV is standing on. This I don't know what we're going to call it. This shelf, I suppose. Okay, so um, oh, I just realised if you just get the TV and the shelf, we need to move it up so that it's uh, sitting on the grid floor. Because otherwise, it's not really. Uh, it sounds it's underneath the floor. Okay, um, so now that we've done that, let's. Uh, just take a look at uh, this object and uh, again we can do the thing that we did with the fireplace and hit the forward slash uh, on the number pad okay and um, is it the forward slash or is it the back slash? Uh, I think that, oh well, I forgot which is the back and which is the forward, it's the one on the number pad above 8 okay so let's uh, quickly unwrap this so the way we do this is similar to the fireplace we just select where all the holes are around all the edges and everything and then um, that might actually be it uh, or might be let's just mark those seams and switch to a, a different wood texture which I again got from cdtextures.com so fine and then wood fine this one this dark brown one like that and now let's go to U and then um, the smart UV project I suppose I don't know, go through the same thing that I had to go with the, uh, I had to go through the fireplace but let's see what it looks like when we just unwrap it normally and let's apply the scale and then unwrap it again no, it's the same thing so let's uh, give it a smart UV project and make sure that the uh, material has actually got that texture on it. Now I'm not going to texture view. Okay, um, that's not actually looking too bad how it is. Might just scale it up a bit. And, um, you know, it's, it's a weird one, so. Uh, might just stick this face and then rotate it round so that it's like one plank going up. And I mean, that's actually done a pretty good job. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. And it's just sitting in the corner of the room. That's actually done an okay job. So let's leave it like that. In fact, let's see, does it look strange in the scene? It might do. Let's just quickly zoom in. And if it just looks a bit dark and bland sitting in the scene, we might have to play around with the nodes, but I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. Um, yeah, it looks a bit dark. Um, but then again, you know. Yeah, that's what it should look like. Yeah, alright, I think we can leave it like that. I mean, it's, it's looking okay. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's leave it at that. So, the next thing I want to give the materials to is uh, these beams up here, which... Have I got... Yeah, I've got a beam material, okay. Um, now, in the original, which was this one, I wasn't too happy with the material that the beams had because it just made them look strange. So I'm going to try and correct that this time. So uh, let's see what I can do. So let's just go into the node editor because again, you know, I like to. I just it's just I don't know why, but things just seem a lot easier in the node editor. You might disagree. You might find it horrible, but you know. So we're going to have a diffuse in the top of this mix shader, and then we're going to have a glossy thing at the bottom. Or should we have it glossy or should we just have it? Uh, okay, I'm going to have it dark like that and then have 0 0.05 for the factor on the gloss. Uh, well, for the factor of the mix shader with the gloss at the bottom. And um, that actually looks okay. I'm quite pleased with that. I might just lower the factor even more to a 0 0.02. And uh, yeah, I've uh, done a much better job with those beams. Um, in fact, I might even give the window frame the same 
material. Well, roughly the same anyway. So yeah, let's go, go to the window frame and uh, give that a bit of gloss as well. So to do that, we're going to go into the shader. Um, mix shader again. <sighs> Losing my voice a bit because I've just been talking to myself for about an hour now. And let's now add in a glossy shader there. And again, point zero two was it? Something like that. And okay. Yeah, now the window frames look um, a bit. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it really suits them. Let's maybe bring down the factor to point zero one. If you can hear some random clicking, I'm just uh, just loosening up my hands because they're all clicky today and they're achy. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, that's looking okay now. I think I might make the grey wall in the background a bit darker. Okay, and maybe even a bit darker still. Okay, so, uh, how long have I been recording for? This has been a small part, six minutes. Uh, let, we can actually fit in a bit of compositing into this. Um, I don't know, I think I just want to make it even darker though, this grey wall. Yeah, that should do it. In fact, I think it needs to be a bit lighter now. You just play around with, uh, your scene. Okay, that should look okay. And uh, in fact, let's prepare for the compositing. So, um, as you can see, if we take a look at this, um, you can see these light streaks sort of coming into the room. And uh, that's what we call volumetric lighting, where the light has, um, it doesn't just make things, you know, light up. It ha you can see its physical appearance, if that makes sense. So that, you know, it's this is volumetric lighting. So, to do that in the compositor isn't too hard unless you're actually making it as an animation, but even then it's not too hard. So let's select this uh, lamp here and let's duplicate it, this sun lamp. And we're going to change this into a spot lamp. And then let's just save it here and then uh, go to File, Save As, just in case we mess things up a bit. And let's call this um, uh, B uh, Blender Internal, like that. And uh, then we just load up the Blender Internal file that we made. Okay, and now we're gonna, uh, it's exactly the same thing, but we're gonna change this to a Blender Render instead of Cycle, so all our material should have gone now. Uh, now we're gonna uh, get rid of the sun and just keep all this stuff here and we're gonna make uh, some render layers so let's make another render layer here and this is gonna be called uh, light and the rest is gonna be called objects and the objects is just gonna be well the everything but the light or oh, the, these two layers where the objects are and then this thing here uh, this lamp is going to be on the third layer and it's actually going to be in the third layer as well on this thing so um, oh yeah move it to the third layer okay so now with uh, move that to the third okay now if you select all these layers like this and uh, oh uh, yeah we need to set this to halo and then just increase the step value a bit uh, like that now when we render this Oh, that's not looking good. Um, I think if we set the intensity of the halo down to 1, and uh, make sure we take off specular and diffuse, and maybe uh, increase the sample buffers up to 9. Um, oh, take off halo, but... Oh! Oh yeah, it's because we've got the horizon color as black. Now when you render it, yeah, it's just invisible. Um, so set the intensity up to 1, and the energy up to 1. Sorry about that, it's just because I'm retarded. And there we go. You can now see we've got this uh, volumetric light coming into the room. But it's, you know, uh, it's just leaving great big 
blob at the back of the room. So let's just increase the size here way up and increase the distance a bit. Okay, so now when we render this, there we go, you can see this light coming in from uh, the outside. Okay, so I think that's good enough. Maybe if I just uh, bring the soft size down to 1. Okay, um, maybe increase this to about 5,000 here. Okay, five, 4992, so that's what it has to be. And that's the size value under the sample buffers, by the way. Okay, um, maybe increase the steps up to 12. And we just want to play around with it a bit. It's looking kind of strange right now. Um, let's see. Uh, if we decrease the sample buffers to 1, um, it'll just speed up the render time a bit. Maybe change the soft to 0 0.01. And the... Uh, I'm not really too good with spotlighting, but... I could give it a go. Maybe, um... Hmm. Increase these samples up to 9. Okay, that's absolutely nothing. Um... Hmm. Okay, uh, we could just leave it at that. Um, let's actually just see if we, what happens if we, uh, uh, let's just press Control A and apply that as its rotation. Just have it like this. Then, uh, uh, well, we scale it down. Oh, uh, not like that, no. Uh, scale down the, um, what you call it, the size here. Will that do anything? Yeah, there we go, we're getting more of an effect now. So I think we need to... Oh... Hang on, um... Right, let's go way back so that it's still pointing over here. And then change the spot shape size down a bit. Because that changes what we're looking at. Okay? And maybe if we decrease the distance as well, because otherwise it might create some weird stretching or something. Okay, so let's just bring that down to about there. Oh no, uh, increase it a bit. Okay, uh, maybe even a bit more. Yeah, here we go. Um, so that's looking okay now. Uh, I mean, it's still looking quite strange, but that's just uh, how it goes. Maybe if we just decrease the size to the minimum that we can actually get it to. Without ma uh, making it actually look bad. Hmm. Okay, um... Maybe if we just, uh... Oh, I know. How about we include... Wait, no, 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 what am I saying? Um... Let's just look at the objects layer. Uh, rendered, that is. So, objects. Um, hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, I think we need to include the lamp in the objects, perhaps. There we go, that's what I was wanting all along. Right, uh, now uh, we've got some weird lights happening up here. I'm not sure what that's all about, but we've got the volumetric lighting. We just have to uh, get rid of this roof this part of the ceiling just up here um, yeah just get rid of all of this bit because uh, of course as long as this is in it, uh, as long as this is in a different file it should be fine so if you get rid of all of that then uh, that just saves us trying to figure out what that light is all about Although apparently that makes things worse so let's maybe keep them in um, Okay. Um, not sure why that's happening. Perhaps it's something to do with. Uh, in fact, I have no idea. Um, let's just uh, put some random objects up here, so that you know, just to figure out what it is. 
Let's just get a cube, put that up here, don't make it go inside the room, and just scale it up on the Y axis here. And that should just try and block some light. Yeah, see that worked. Just need to move it over a bit. So that it's all up here. Okay. Um, yeah, so now that we've got this, this tutorial has been going on for quite a while now, uh, we can save this image as the volumetric light factor. There we go. And save that. And okay, so that's the end of this part. Uh, we don't really still got all this stuff. Yeah, it's looking good. We can get rid of that lamp now. Okay, so thanks for watching this part. I'll be carrying on in part. Um, uh, oh, hang on, this is the Blender internal file. But that's fine. Okay, so yeah, I'll be carrying on in the next part, uh, which will be part 8, I think. Let me just check. Um, part 7. So yeah, it'll be part 8. Okay, and um, yeah, so. Thanks for watching, um, follow me on Twitter, comment on this video if you've got any questions or something like that. Uh, also, um, oh, my mind's just gone. Oh, like the video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.